Hello everyone and welcome back to this episode of the Better World Challenge podcast. In this episode, I am thrilled to bring you Marjorie Alexander, the podcast host of A Sustainable Mind and Queer and Woo. In this episode, we talk about how to be an environmental change maker, how to use your passions to start a podcast and grow on your journey, and more. So, let's dive in. Hi, I'm Justin Furtado, a social entrepreneur with a passion and experience in community engagement and philanthropy located in Eugene, Oregon. It's our responsibility to take care of our communities, have uplifting conversations, and make the world a better place. You're listening to the Better World Challenge podcast. Hello and welcome to the Better World Challenge podcast, Marjorie. It is great to have you on this morning. My first question for you and my first question for all my guests is what inspires slash motivates you when you get out of bed in the morning? Oh my gosh, such a loaded question, but also so simple. Um, For me, what gets me up in the morning is just the opportunity to help people. Um, I know that that sounds so cliche and so cheesy, but um, I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. I'm a helper. I'm a worker bee. And especially when I have friends or clients or people in my community that have uh, that have a problem that they can't find a solution to. And I either know that I know the answer or I know where I can find the answer. I can't, I can't help myself. I have to kind of jump in and, and, and help out. Um, but the more that I learn about myself, uh, and the more that I learn to have better boundaries around that, uh, cause not everyone needs your help and not everybody wants your help. Um, it helps me focus my help where it will be the most impactful and in the communities that, that actually, you know, want me to come in and, and help out in the ways that I do. So what gets me up in the morning is definitely helping out other people and then actually learning how to, uh, to focus that help and that energy and those resources is something that I'm definitely learning a lot about right now. Yeah, I love that. I, and I you know, definitely resonate with that message. And also with the like, maybe not everyone needs our help. So trying to find that little niche of like the community of, you know, where our help is most needed. And so our conversation today is going to really surround around your a sustainable mind podcast. And I would my first question in that regard is like, what started and sparked that journey to go down this starting a sustainable mind? Well, let me backtrack and and tell you why I got into sustainability in the first place. I think most people that have known me a really long time would say that I was always a tree hugger, but I was not aware of that. (laughs) I was not aware of that at all. I remember um, in high school once I was driving somewhere with my friends, I was in the back seat, and one person in the front, I don't know if it was the driver or the passenger, but they dropped something out of the window and I freaked out. They just littered, we were at a stoplight and I was like, if you do not open the door and pick that up right now, I am getting out of this car. Like I was so, anyway, that was not the correct way to handle that. Um, I've toned it down quite a bit over the years. But um, when I first realized that I was into environmental sustainability and that the the state of our planet and and our planet's ability to 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 host us as humans and the impacts the negative impacts that we've been having on that uh, ecosystem, I think started in uh, in my mid twenties. I'd been in the film industry for several years at that point, and there were just so many instances every single day of um, very non sustainable practices in the film industry that I saw on just a regular basis. There was one instance where we'd basically built an entire makeshift to maybe even three bedroom apartment within this warehouse. And it was one of those productions that's just like, you know, run and gun, as they say, we're just gonna throw this crap together and like see what happens. Um, At the end of the project, we didn't have the time or the money or the resources to kind of break everything down the way that it should have been broken down like they do with theater, because a lot of stuff gets reused in theaters, flats and whatnot, um, and give that to another production. So what wound up happening was that everything was basically destroyed over the course of a couple hours and tossed into a 40-yard dumpster. All of that stuff, all of those materials, thousands of dollars, were purchased brand new. Um, a lot of it was put together by, by me, um, and 
it, it just, it, it hurt. It hurt a lot. You know, um, I am a theater geek. I've also had experience in the, uh, in the construction industry. So just knowing the value of those resources and then to see them go to waste really opened my eyes. Um, and there are tons of different instances aside from that for the film industry, but I decided that I didn't really, I didn't really want to spend my life uh, working on projects that I didn't feel were making a difference. And then all the while continuing to be wasteful of the resources that went into producing that content. Um, so I started looking into ways for me to get involved with the sustainability community, um, environmental sciences, and I wound up getting my master's degree at Green Mountain College. And for my master's thesis project, they said, what do you want to do? I wanted to share stories. I wanted to share stories of people like me who discovered that they had um, had a love and a passion for something that had to do with saving our environment, but really taking care of the environment so that it can take care of us. Um, the podcast was really just my way of taking what I already knew how to do. Uh, I knew how to build websites. I knew how to record and edit media very well. That's something that I'd done since I was like 16 years old. And um, I really wanted to hear stories of people being inspired to not just change their habits within their own household, but changing something in their larger community, changing something in, at the nonprofit that they work at or the company that they work at, um, starting a company from scratch that is making waves in the sustainability world. Lots of those stories aren't being shared on a regular basis. And for the stories that are being shared, I would say that the audience is not always composed of the people that it should be. You know, uh, another re big reason why I started A Sustainable Mind was I went to a, a conference. I forgot what it was called, um, but a lot of, of big household names in environmental sustainability were there speaking. It was on a college campus, this event, but I was one of the very few young people in the audience. I was one of, I wouldn't say very few women, but there were certainly fewer women that I thought that there should be. And there were very few people of color. I'm like, these are really important conversations that everyone needs to be hearing. And these are important conversations where everyone needs to be at the table in terms of finding the solutions. Why aren't people there? And so starting A Sustainable Mind was really my way of, my very small way of, of not just amplifying important and inspiring stories, but also uh, bringing others to the table in order to hear those conversations that are so important. That's wonderful. I really do think the power of storytelling is something that I'm really starting to learn about in my own podcasting journey and finding your own like passion and curiosity for wanting to kind of build a better planet and environment. And like we are, I like the word you used, like the planet is hosting us humans in that we are guests here on Mother Earth. And I really kind of like that perspective. And so can you talk about your journey of a sustainable mind? Like, how did it grow? Were you learning along the way, the process, like from your guests? Like, can you talk about some maybe moments that just really, you know, sparked your mind of like, this is, I really enjoy the community that I'm building and I, I'm feeling inspired right now. Interestingly enough, I, 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 and I don't, I don't really have the, the timeline right in my head, but I took this course maybe even a year before I started the podcast on how to start a podcast. Um, it was a very expensive course that I, that I purchased and I didn't have the money to pay for it. I put it on some credit card probably. Um, but it came in really handy when it, when I decided to actually start a podcast and that really got me, um, to a place where the second that I launched, I could make sure that I was launching big. I could make sure that I was getting um, my content heard by as many people as possible, um, that I that I was getting, you know, the ratings and the downloads and all of that to kind of climb the iTunes ratings and, and all of that, which, you know, there were very, f there were a lot fewer podcasts at that time 
there were probably, I don't know, about seven or eight times as many podcasts as when I started five and a half years ago. Um, so there's a lot more competition out there, but, um, it was a little, it was a, it was a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. And I think maybe three weeks into having launched the show or five weeks into launching the show, um, we hit number 23 on the front page of Apple, which was like, oh my gosh, you know, I still, I still, that's one of those things I still put in my media kit because, you know, when I run down the list of accomplishments of the show, I'm like, ah, I did that. Um, these days, like I said, there's so much more competition and, and there's luckily there's so many more shows about sustainability, um, which is great because at the time that I released mine, there weren't a lot and there certainly weren't shows that were, um, sharing the stories of others, really giving them a platform and digging deeper into uh, why those projects were so important for them to start in the first place. Um, what I will say about, you know, the evolution of A Sustainable Mind is that I have had to, and maybe you'll encounter this um, with your show as well, I've kind of had to reassess my reason for doing it over the years. Um, like I said, initially it was my master's thesis project. And I certainly did not expect it to have the impact that it did um, by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, at this point, however many downloads, a lot, um, a lot of letters, a lot of text messages and direct messages from people about, you know, how the show has changed their lives. Um, it's definitely something that keeps me on track, but at the same time, I've had to think about what exactly I'm getting out of it. And I think what I, at the end of the day, have realized is the changes that I make in my own life in terms of making sure that I have as little of a footprint on the planet as possible is probably far outshined by the impact that I can have on the environment through my show. And so that's really what keeps me coming back to the microphone, I think, is knowing that my my personal talents, I turns out I'm incredibly good at interviewing people, even though I have terrible social anxiety, <laughs> like terrible social anxiety. This, this right here, I mean, me being interviewed is, oh my gosh, I'm sweating so much, you have no idea. <laughs> um... I don't know what the evolution of a sustainable mind has been. It's just it's been a it's been a huge roller coaster of looking within, determining what matters to me, but also understanding that that can shift over time, uh, and being okay with that. A lot of listeners of my show that have been around since the beginning know that I I tend to disappear for like weeks or months at a time without re releasing any content. And it's this like internal struggle of like, okay, wait a second, let me remind myself why I'm here doing this. But there's always a new story to be told and shared. And there's always a new, um, hopefully person to inspire to do, you know, bigger and, and better things when it comes to their personal life and their community, uh, as far as the environment goes. I would say that I'm certainly the lucky one as far as my show goes, because I have been able to sit for 20 and 30 and 40 minutes with some of the most amazing people. And Tom Zaki, for instance, um, CEO of, of TerraCycle, I mean, that guy before COVID, I mean, he's in, you know, 50 or 60 or 70 countries a year traveling, speaking. The fact that he would sit down for a 25 minute conversation with me was, was absolutely huge that that has impacted my life in in huge ways is just getting to meet amazing people uh and spending time with them in an authentic place yeah that's wonderful and i really appreciate you for being vulnerable and you know sharing your story within that and i think that's one of the great parts about you know creating content and building an audience is like you're building this community but you're also learning about yourself and you know what you can do and you're discovering your how how to tell those different stories and you know ask those different interview questions and getting different things out of you know these these wonder, wonderful people so um i want to you know ask maybe a little more uh question specifically surrounding sustainability like 
what sort of sustainability you talked about like your personal journey of sustainability what are one of, what are some of the ways that you practice sustainability in your own life one thing that's big for me is always asking where does this come from uh and asking that in terms of food or really anything that i purchase or acquire um these days you know i think i think a lot of people are starting to realize maybe i should not have purchased that thing that cost so much money that I used one time. There are like websites and apps that, you know, for people to trade things and and borrow things and get stuff used. But um, something that's really big for me is just understanding the source of everything. Everything that I purchase, everything that I eat, put on my body or in my body, you know, um, who made those things? What are the materials? Do the materials come from a sustainable source? Um, and, and if there is a label or a certification or, you know, a claim that's made by the manufacturer on the, on the package, like, well, what does that mean? Like, what does sustainable mean? What does fair trade mean? What does, you know, sustainably sourced all, all of these words, they're, they're, you know, I mean, there's some organization out there that's making money from these things. Sometimes, well, sometimes they're, they're, they're nonprofit entities, which is awesome, but really just questioning the, the origin of everything and not, it doesn't always change my actions at the end of the day. It doesn't always mean that I'm not going to wind up buying whatever it is, but just to be conscious of that and to respect the things that I buy, to take care of them better, to perhaps repair them. Uh, when and if they break, or at least find a really good home for it when I'm done with it. Um, it just really makes you respect everything that you have a lot more. So that's really big for me. It's just understanding the origin of everything. Um, we as people, we have origins and we put like a lot of stock in that. But when it comes to stuff or when it comes to food, you know, we're, we're so quick to kind of throw, throw it away or be really dismissive and that doesn't necessarily seem to be fair to me. Definitely. So what are, what are some tips that, uh, you have to potentially like, where can we find some of the origins? Like if I'm in the store and I'm looking things up, like, do I need to Google like each thing or is there like, you know, should I like affiliate myself with certain brands at the store that I like, I know for sure that they are sustainable. Sure. That's a really diff that can be a really challenging one. The easiest, um, uh, the easiest, thing to do that with is food because pretty much all food because it goes in our bodies there are certain um there are certain standards to telling people what the ingredients are and or um you know grown in mexico or whatever if it's an avocado or something like that um and then you also can actually research the farms where where, where these things come from uh so many of these agricultural companies specifically, um, they have parent companies that have parent companies and they all link back to the same entity. And some of those are not necessarily known to be, um, to be the nicest when it comes to their impact on the planet. Uh, I think the best thing to do is probably just to purchase things from places that you trust. So instead of, you know, looking, you know, at the tag in your pants to try to figure out where these pants came from, maybe purchasing it from a company that does its homework. That's their actual job. So if you're purchasing from a company that you know tries to either purchase items from, uh, from small companies that source things wherever, whatever country you are uh, local to, um, if they've used, you know, non-toxic dyes, if they have uh, had fair wages for the people that have, you know, been part of the manufacturing process, things like that. As consumers, it's really difficult for us to, you know, pick every single thing apart and figure out where it comes from. But probably the easiest way is just to look at the larger, um, the larger entity that's selling it to you and whether or not you trust that entity because that entity has done the research. Um, so when it comes to like something on Amazon, that that's actually something that I have seen a ton more questions about online is like, well, where was this, uh, where was this made? What are the materials? 
you're not going to get that stuff on Amazon. You're just not. And and most people love Amazon. It's literally the most convenient thing. And what if you need some super, super duper specialty stuff that you literally cannot get anywhere else? Well, then you just have to make a decision or do without. Um, but when it comes to clothing or food, you know, going to the local co-op instead of the grocery store or the farmer's market instead of the grocery store, um, where I can actually talk to the people that grew my food or talk to the manager at the local food co-op down the street and figure out what are the local farms where this stuff came from. Um, they've done the work for you. Or, uh, you know, looking at the the mission statement by some of the clothing companies that you're buying from. There are tons of clothing companies these days that are really focused on selling you um clothing that is sustainably, that the materials are sustainably sourced, that they are uh, constructed in a way that's going to make sure that they last for years and not just months, that it's not just part of this cyclical fast fashion crap. Yeah, that would that would probably be my, my number one suggestion is to go to an overall source that you trust and then become a patron of their business. Yeah, those are great tips. And it's almost what I'm hearing is like kind of having like this conscious mindset of like being cognizant of some of these stores and their mission. And so just kind of being aware instead of like a robot to like Amazon and like ordering for convenience, like, you know, doing a little bit of research, it'll take like five, 10 minutes and then having some of these companies, brands, foods that you know where it comes from and you can kind of be consistent and almost what I, what I like to think about is then tell your friends and then, you know, have them, you know, kind of get on board. And so like that way we can, you know, support some of these brands, companies, you know, food organizations that grow sustainably and then, you know, kind of put the almost the consumer pressure on some of these other brands that aren't, you know, being as friendly to the environment, as you say. And so as we, you know, wrap up this conversation, I my my final question for you is what does a better world look like for you in 2021? Oh boy. What does a better world look like for me in 2021? Well, getting settled here in my, my new city of Philadelphia, that's, that's, that's a big part of it. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, I've spent 15 years on the West coast and have newly relocated. Um, a better world in my mind looks like placemaking basically here in Philadelphia, you know, I'm doing research about community organizations that I want to get involved with, maybe partner with organizations that I can volunteer with on a regular basis. Um, just getting community back. I mean, it's no secret we're in the middle of um, a global situation with COVID that is uh, unpleasant for everyone. And a better world to me looks like hopefully people coming together in person and coming back even stronger, understanding that we are absolutely better in community. We are more impactful in community. We are uh, healthier individuals when we're in community. And how can we do that when we're physically apart, but also once we're able to come back together physically, how can we then amplify that to be like, we, we don't, we don't want to go backwards. We don't want to find ourselves in this situation again. And if we do, how can we make sure that all of the good stuff doesn't stop happening? Um, volunteering for environmentally sustainable organizations is something that uh, can be a very physical thing. You're getting out there, you're doing trail work, you're um, preparing, you know, meals for uh, underserved communities or uh, doing beach cleanups, things like that. Uh, that's all very physical stuff where you have to be around other people. And so a lot of uh, volunteer events have not been happening and people need help and communities need help and the planet needs more help than ever. So how can we, uh, how can we keep that help going when our circumstances are different? <laughs> Let's say I was going to curse there for a second, but I can't. <laughs> No, that's perfect. I mean, I think that's very, <laughs> it's a great way to have, you know, describing of what's going on right now. And I know, like, I personally enjoy volunteering and being in person and having that in-person 
interaction because I think strengthening community is like, you know, you're, you're only as strong as, you know, everyone in your community. So, um, love that. And I thank you so much for your time today, Marjorie. I really enjoyed our conversation around sustainability and, um, how can people, you know, find your, your podcast? You actually have a new podcast that I'd love for you to share. And so you can head on over to a sustainable mind.com or just search a sustainable mind, wherever you are enjoying your podcasts. Um, my new show is called queer and woo, and it is a self care podcast for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, it's something I'm I'm very proud of, but in uh, an, in an attempt to uh, delve even deeper into self care for myself over the last year, uh, I have t- taken a long pause from 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 recording uh, both podcasts actually. But I will be starting uh, new episodes on both here in the coming weeks. Uh, new episodes for a sustainable mind will be out on February fourth. Really excited for that. And um, if you are in the LGBT community or you know someone that is, uh, please ask them to head on, on over to queerandwoo.com and of course, Queer and Woo on Apple or Spotify, Google Podcasts, stuff like that. Awesome. I'll definitely make sure to share that. And uh, again, appreciate your time today, Marjorie. Thanks so much, Justin. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Better World Challenge podcast. I hope you're feeling inspired right now to make a difference in your own community. If you want to find out more about what you can do, check out thebetterworldchallenge.com. And don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts as it's the best way to share our message. Together, we can bring about real, tangible change. 